Oh, if you don't like that, I don't know what I can do to make you happy. Oh, it's perfect. Look at that. They clinically they said bright red papule. Uh, rule yeah, out so cherry angio. Good. Yeah, even from two X. Uh, virtually, you guys instantly know. Clear cell acanthoma, it's elongated, reedy, really acanthomatous, or very acanthotic, excuse me, it's sharp cut off from the surrounding epidermis, right? The cells aren't really clear, despite the name, they're more like pale. Cytoplasm, also with a bunch of spongiosis in between, and both those things together give this lesion its pallor, its pale look. It's a sharp, discrete line delineating it from the surrounding um, epidermis, and occasionally I've seen ones that are kind of multifocal that'll have a zone and then back to normal epidermis, then another zone. So, you know, they're not perfectly round. And this one's also great because it has the classic finding we're supposed to have of neutrophils, right? So there's neutrophils scattered in the midst of this thing, trickling through the epidermis. And they're on their way up to the stratum corneum where they mingle in to the para. So you have lost the granular layer, parakeratosis with neutrophils. In many ways, a lot of similar things here to what we see in psoriasis, right? Uh, the surface aspect of a clear cell acanthoma has, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's like psoriasis, even the little dilated vessels down here, right? So that is uh, a perfect example of a clear cell acanthoma, and they're usually a solitary lesion. The leg is a common site. And then I think I've mentioned before, but occasionally I've seen a few other things that can kind of mimic clear cell acanthoma, and I've seen trichelomomas that um, kind of look a little like this, and also inverted follicular uh, keratoses can sometimes have some overlap. I not like this particular case, but I've seen ones where where there were those three entities, clear cell acanthoma, IFK, and trichelomoma, can have a little bit of overlap. And also uh, porokeratosis, I'm sorry, poroma, excuse me, poroma can do this sharp cutoff here at the edge. So uh, otherwise this doesn't look really like a poroma, but poroma does that, sharp cutoff. So that's another thing that can overlap here. And I have had one case uh, earlier in my career that on a shave biopsy, I thought was actually because it was really glassy um, uh, and it was a little atypical. I thought it was going to be a squame. And I think I called it a squame, superficially sampled. And then when they went back to re-excise it, it was actually a clear cell acanthoma instead. So I had never thought about this as mimicking squamous cell. But on that particular case, it was a superficial shave biopsy and it was glassy and pushing down. And I thought it was, was enough to call a squame. And once I saw the whole lesion, I realized, ah, no, it's not. So... That's how we learn things, okay? Really good example, just classic.